Um, uh, I want to talk. Oh, no. Talk a little bit about this here. So we have all the different groups here, and you can see very similar numbers. There's a few outliers uh, and so on with the distilled water, sucrose, and sodium chloride. But you can see here that the least amount of mass changes with the distilled water, most with sucrose, and then kind of intermediate with the sodium chloride. And I want to talk about why that is. And so when we look at <coughs> the three different setups here, so you had your dialysis tubing with the distilled water and the outside is distilled water. So it's 100% water both inside and outside. So most people probably predicted in your, in your hypothesis that you would see 0% change in mass, right? So and the reason why is because that since there's equal concentrations and there's no solutes, that those water molecules, as they're bouncing around, will hit that dialysis tubing evenly, and therefore um, it will go in and out evenly. Clearly, we did not see this um, in every single case here. So we have some, a couple groups that are pretty low here, that are close, um, and then you know a few that are a little bit higher. So a lot, most of them, it looks like gained mass, um, and we have one that lost mass. Uh, so this 0.52 and 0.82 are pretty close to being, you know, uh, uh, close to zero. Uh, last hour, or third, second hour, it was, um, somebody had 0.02% change. So it was like almost um, uh, on the dot. So can somebody tell me why it is that we might not have gotten equal, like exactly a 0% change of mass in this? We tied off the ends of the tube, and so there might have been a larger opening there that would have disrupted the flow between because we can't guarantee that there would have been no leakage. Okay, yeah, so this is not 100% this little, you know, where you tied it off like this. Uh, there had some, there's a hole in there, there is, like, and so in, in water is a very small molecule, so it could get through. All right, absolutely. So that could have been an issue um, with some. Anybody else? Just like human error. You can't get Okay, so human sure. error. All right, that is always a uh, variable almost in most things. Absolutely. Anything else you can think of that could have caused it to... I'm thinking, um, you know, after you took it out to mass it, remember I told you to um, dry it off and so on, and I'm thinking that maybe some water, especially in this little area that's tied, all right, I mean, I'm sure everybody didn't take it and go in there to like dab it all out to get all the water out, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but a few droplets of water can make a big difference in your percent change. It could be the difference between... Uh, you know, 0.82 and zero, you know what I mean? And so so that could be another thing that could have been um, an issue as well. Um, another group uh, in another hour that lost mass, like this group here, said that he noticed that when they were drying it off, he felt like he might have put a little pressure on the cell, and he's afraid that he might have squirted some water out the sides or out the, in, in the process of drying it off. So that kind of goes with that human error bit, all right, as well. Okay, so close, and some groups are really good at getting close and some are not, all right, but we see the lesser change here in the distilled water. Um, so, so ideally, it would be a 0% change, all right? And so <coughs> then looking at the next one, well, the next two, let's talk about the next two kind of together. You have a one molar sucrose solution and a one molar sodium chloride solution in the bag. So the concentration is the same, um, it's just the solute is different. So because remember molarity is a measurement of concentration. It is telling you that well, remember when you make that one molar solution, you're putting 
a mole of the substance and bringing and dissolving it in water and bringing it up to a liter. So a mole of the substance is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So you have the same number of molecules all right, in each one of these, um, but the, the, the solute is different. So can somebody tell me then if that's the case in both of these cases, and they're both floating around in distilled water, why is it, if we go back to the churn over here, why is it that sucrose, uh, the percent change in mass is so much higher than sodium chloride? Why does that make sense? All right, so, so sucrose, anybody remember what the formula for sucrose is? The disaccharide, so it's C12H22O11. And so it was two C6H12O6 is put together minus the water. So this is a really big molecule compared to <coughs> sodium chloride. All right, so sodium chloride, when it goes into water, what happens to it? It's an ionic compound. So sodium chloride does what? It separates into sodium and the chloride ion. And so those are very small, so it dissociates into the sodium and chloride ion. These are really small compared to this big uh, molecule here. And so remember that the dialysis tubing, I'm just going to draw it like this, has pores of a certain size, and it's selective based upon size in terms of if the molecules are small enough to get through, they will diffuse from high to low concentration. If they're not, they won't. And so, as Megan said, sucrose is a very big molecule. So I'm going to draw a bunch of sucroses here, just putting it as dots here. So you have the sucrose in here, very big molecule, and even though um, this is a high concentration because it's just in pure water, uh, it, it would move from high to low if it could, but since it can't get through the pores, it's stuck there. Of water molecules on the outside, the water molecules are very, very small. Um, they're only three atoms big, and so they can get through those pores just fine. So water is moving from a high to low concentration and um, <coughs> will continue to move in. Now let's look at the same picture here with what's going on with sodium chloride. And so sodium chloride, it dissociates, and so what you end up with is these little sodium chloride ions here. They're small, so therefore you have, this is sodium and this is the chloride ion. These guys can get out, all right, um, because they're small enough. Again, it's in distilled water, so water is going in, but we have more water going in here than, um, than, um, than here. And so therefore, and so part of that is um, because as sodium chloride diffuses out, the bag is losing some mass, right, as sodium chloride goes in. But then it's gaining some mass when water goes in. But what happens to the sodium chloride concentration when the sodium chloride diffuses out? It goes down, right? It lowers here. And so therefore, eventually, less water is going to go in because it out. All right. So these, this cell here, can it reach equilibrium? Could it? Yes. With the outside? Absolutely, because these guys can diffuse back and forth until equilibrium is reached. Can this cell ever reach equilibrium? No, this cell cannot. Um, <coughs> so you can let the set all. We can let it set all night long. That water would continue to go in because there's always going to be a higher water concentration on the outside because there's nothing but water on the outside and there's always going to be sucrose on the inside. Let me ask you this. If we left it in here for a week, would the water continue to go in for a whole week? Would it just keep on going and going and going? There's a limited amount of space in here, right? And so therefore, <coughs> um, as it goes in, uh, water goes in, eventually that diffusion of water would stop, even though there's still a higher water concentration on the outside, but would stop because as water goes in, it's getting filled, it's putting pressure on the outside, and so eventually the water can 
diffused in. And so that's another thing that you were going to look at um, uh, in our second part of our lab, is a second thing that plays a role in which way water will move. Water moves always from high to low concentration, but the second thing that plays a role is pressure. So therefore, for instance, here, in this case, as water, this fills up to the max with water, even though water's higher concentration is on the outside, it's not going to continue to diffuse in because pressure is not allowing it to. So there's um, two things that actually play a role, pressure and the solute concentration, which is what we're going to look at. Our second part of our lab is where we're going to look at real cells. So these we set up fake cells. We're going to look at real plant cells, and uh, we're going to look at potato cells, and we're going to figure out um, some things about it and, and, and tell some information about the potato cells. So just to give you an idea for the rest of the week, um, tomorrow we're going to talk about that second part of the lab. We're going to design it and talk about the design of it. You're going to set it up on Thursday. It is something that needs to sit overnight, so then you'll get the results on Friday. So we'll round out the, the week there with the second part of the lab. All right, but this is what we should have seen here. Any questions on that? All right. So I want to go over that just in case you had some uh, weird numbers or something like that, so that when you answer the questions, uh, you can um, answer them with data that's accurate. Okay? Uh, the um, the lab itself, I forgot to mention here. I put up here. I changed the due date yesterday. I had it said due um, Wednesday, but. <coughs> um, I want to go over the two homework assignments that I checked off yesterday, and my thought was I could go over and give you some time to work on the questions for the lab, um, but then it came out, the, it's going to take almost to the end of the hour to go over those. So, um, so because I have a video I want you to watch, um, I decided to push the questions back to Thursday. That way you can try them tonight. If you have questions, you can ask tomorrow, and then they're um, Thursday on Thursday. Right. By the way, the, this, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you something about water potential, which is using what I just talked about here, um, that water diffuses not only because of concentration, but also we're going to throw in pressure in there, and that's what water potential is. And so, so the notes that I'm going to give you tonight, they're, just, they're written notes, so you have to have just paper, just Oh, regular notes, all right? So um, so there's nothing that you need for that. Um, so it's about 30 minutes. Right, so okay? So, and then we'll, we'll build on that tomorrow with the lab. All right, so with that being said, let's pull out the um, diffusion and osmosis challenge as well as the osmosis challenge. So two things that I checked off yesterday while you guys were setting up the lab. So we can see. All right. They had questions on it. I'm going to make this a little higher. Things I know about this setup now. 
All right, so um, we have side X and side Y. Side X has two molar glucose solutions. That's telling you the concentration of glucose. All right, so this side only has one molar glucose solution. So um, if glucose could get across the membrane, which direction would glucose want to go? Decide why, from high to low concentration. But glucose can't get to the membrane, so those molecules are staying put. So then we look at, now this side has 0.1 molar concentration of sodium chloride, and this side has 0.2. Sodium chloride would diffuse in which direction? High to low, 0.2 is higher than 0.1. So I'm going to go ahead and write this on here, that sodium and the chloride ion, we, that's what I know here, that it can move through the membrane and it would go from high to low concentration to the left. Um, now, uh, this part right here where it says at the start, so I, they had some confusion with this. At the start, this is just telling you what the molarity of the total solution is. It's telling you how much solutes is dissolved in the water. So that 2.1 came from adding 2 and 0.1. So therefore, that's the total um, concentration of solutes on this side. And this is the total solute concentration on this side. That's what that is, the total solute concentration. And so that's 1 plus 0.2, that's 1.2. So then I had some people ask, well, you're not giving me anything about water. So how do I know which way water would move in this situation? Can somebody tell me how I would know that without being directly told about the concentration of water on either side? Charlotte? That's right. The one that has the lower concentration of solutes will have a higher concentration of water. So who, which side has the lower concentration of total solutes? And that is side Y. So side Y, I'm going to go ahead and put that this has a higher water concentration because it has a lower solute concentration. This has a higher solute concentration, so therefore this is a lower water concentration. All right, so that's what I know. So therefore, now knowing that, I can tell some things about which way water is going to move. Which way would water move initially here? From side what to side what? Y to X, right? High to low concentration. So I'm going to add this here. Water is going to go this way. So this is all I know based upon just this intro here. Okay, so those are all the things that are true. So now we go through and we answer these questions here. So number one, the sodium chloride solution on side X will become more concentrated than uh, and then on side Y, less concentrated. So sodium chloride on side X. Is that going to become more concentrated? Well, is sodium chloride going to diffuse over there? Yes, it will. And so therefore, is it going to become more concentrated? Yes, it will. And so if leaving on side Y, is side Y going to become less concentrated? Yes. All right, so that first part is a true statement. So then let's look at because a substance tends to diffuse from regions of lower concentration to regions of higher concentration. Is that true? No, it should be high to low. So therefore, my statement is correct, but my um, reason is incorrect. So therefore, B is my answer there. Um, number two, the concentration of glucose solutions on side X and Y will remain unchanged. And this is the concentrations of glucose. <coughs> is the concent we already established glucose isn't moving. But is the concentration of glucose going to stay the same throughout the whole experiment after three days? What can move that can change the concentration? Water, right? Water is going to move over here. When water moves to side X, what does it do to the concentration of the solutes? It changes it, it lowers it, right? So the more water you add, the less concentrated it is, the solute. And so therefore, even though glucose can't move, the concentration of glucose is going to change because water can move. What would be a correct statement is if I said the number of glucose molecules remains unchanged. That's true. You'll have the same number of molecules because glucose can't work. All right? And so therefore, um, so that part is false, the first part. 
And then it says, because the membrane is impermeable to glucose, and so glucose cannot diffuse from one side to another. Is that true? That's absolutely true. So the first part is false, the second part is true. So therefore, um, let's see. The statement is incorrect, but the reason is a fact or a principle. All right, I'm going to leave this picture up and I'll just look at another one here. So I'm going to look at the picture. So then number three, the concentration of sodium chloride on side X will eventually equal that on side Y. So on side X and on side Y, will sodium chloride eventually equal out? Yes, because it can diffuse back and forth. So eventually, sodium chloride will reach um, equilibrium there. So that part is true. And it says the reason because sodium chloride ions will move by diffusion from one side to the other, gradually reaching a uniform density, and then the net movement of ions will stop. And that um, the, the net movement of ions will stop. Even though sodium chloride will still go back and forth, but if they get to equilibrium with the equal rate, so they don't have it overwhelmingly going to one side or the other. All right, so that is both is true, so therefore that's why A 